Go. All right, guys, we're here at uh, CrossFit Iron Mile, breaking down 15.3, just announced. Ben, what do you think? First time ever, muscle-ups uh, to start a workout in the open. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, dude, I was pumped about it. I thought it was a really cool workout. Um, I mean, philosophically, to start with the muscle up, obviously that is like eliminating a big chunk of people right off the bat, where normally you have to wait until the end and it becomes a separator. Here, it's like you're either RX or you're scaled, and it's gonna happen right at the beginning. So. Yeah, you can either play or you can't. And right. that's a, kind of an interesting way to start a workout that's kind of programmed for the masses. So, uh, create some interesting problems for a lot of different athletes. Yeah, so uh, when I looked at this workout uh, and I watched Julie and Lauren go through it, um, for me, I was like, this is a wall ball workout. Like that's where the most, the biggest chunk of time is being spent, especially for the elite athletes who are gonna be doing unbroken muscle ups. Um, I mean, that should be the goal of the elite athletes is don't break those muscle ups because you're gonna lose a lot of time when you come off the rings. Yeah, definitely for the elite men. Uh, I don't see, you know, like your, your top 20 guys in the open in the world, maybe even in your region you know, having any reason to break up the muscle ups, especially through, through the first couple rounds. Yeah. Your girls, that might be a different story. You saw Lauren Brooks, definitely elite, definitely, definitely an elite athlete, having to break up the muscle ups. But um, on the men's side, it's definitely gonna uh, be unbroken, at least for the first couple rounds. Yeah, so if that's, if that's what you're going for, and that's what I think a lot of you guys should try to go for, uh, especially in the beginning, then you gotta look at the wall balls as the the main strategic point in the workout. At least that, that's how I looked at it. I did a dry run earlier tonight, and uh, um, Robert, one of our athletes at our gym, he did two sets of 25 wall balls just for time, and I did five sets of 10 for time, and he beat me by 11 seconds. And that's with reasonable breaks in between. So there wasn't a whole, I couldn't see a big advantage to doing bigger sets in the wall balls as far as time, and I felt like I could walk right up to my rope and just go for the 100. You know, I don't know what you're thinking about that, but well, I think a lot of the lower skill movements we've seen in the open so far, you know, we've seen that it doesn't make sense to do big long sets, right? You exactly. Know? And so it's the wall ball is now the same thing as the toe to bar was, and maybe even the uh, the chest bar pull up was in those later rounds. It's something that you should break up, taking advantage of some rest, and then go unbroken in other areas. Yeah. Right. So that's that's what I'm thinking about is try to go unbroken in the in the muscle ups as long as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to go unbroken in the double unders as long as possible. Uh, and then I'm going to try to break up the wall balls just to keep, like, that's where I'm going to try to get my rest. Um, right. Maybe if you're struggling with double unders, you're the type of person that doesn't do 100 routinely in a row, that would be a good opportunity to break those up. Maybe, you know, five sets of 20 or something that you're comfortable with. But the key to all of this stuff, when you're taking your breaks, you can't leave the vicinity. <laughs> like, if you right. drop your wall ball and turn around and walk away and then try to walk back, you're just giving time away. So they got to be short calculated breaks, same thing with the rope, and if the muscle-ups happen, same thing with the muscle-ups. Yeah, if you guys have, don't have a game plan for your breaks, when he says calculated, he really means that. You know, we need to make sure that we're counting one or two breaths, maybe three to four breaths, depending on who you are as an athlete, but there needs to be some measurable break that you guys are taking, not just an indefinite period of time till you feel somewhat better. That's just too arbitrary, it's gonna make, make your workout take too much time, and you won't be able to cycle off the movements as fast as you need to. So make sure that your rests are planned. Um, the other thing is, on the uh, muscle up, you know, we talked about going unbroken. But for some of you guys who are still elite athletes or wanting to go to regionals, maybe muscle ups is a weakness, you're gonna have to break that up somehow early so they don't go away completely. So maybe doing something like a 4-3, right, is gonna make a lot more sense for you than just going seven unbroken because then you get back there the second time, you might just hit that wall and fail. Yeah, another thing to think about you guys when you're trying to figure out what your pacing should be is think about the workout in sections. Like, so you have the muscle up section, the wall ball section, and the double under section. How much time do you want each of those to take? So I know when I did five sets of 10 wall balls, it took me just about two minutes, maybe a little bit less. So I know that the wall ball section of the workout shouldn't take me more than two minutes. I know that the muscle up session, if I do it unbroken, shouldn't take me more than 30 seconds. And the same thing with the double unders. If I do that unbroken, that shouldn't take me more than a minute. So right there, that's three and a half minutes, not counting transition times. I know that an average round should not last more than four minutes. So I can pace my rest periods off of that and I can keep myself accountable. To and the other thing is, when you're looking at this workout, one way you can break it down is if you take the muscle ups or the wall balls or the double unders, and if you find that one of those things is your weakness, or the thing that you want to focus on the most is prioritizing that specific movement. So 
Maybe the wall balls are relatively easy for you and double unders are something that you have, but muscle, muscle ups are a weakness. Well, then you're gonna take more rest through the wall balls and the double unders to make sure that you feel fresh enough to get through bigger sets of the muscle ups. Likewise, if you hate wall balls, if they're just one of those things that you don't like doing. I know Pat Sherwood talks about not liking to, yeah. do, liking to, do, liking to do wall balls. Well, well, then maybe he should go uh, unbroken, uh, or not unbroken on the muscle up so he has a little more energy when he gets to those wall balls. So you gotta figure out where you're at as an athlete and that's gonna give you the best chance of success in a 14 minute workout, which is a lot longer than you might think. Right, 14 minutes. This is the longest workout we've had so far. It's an engine workout. Even though there's muscle ups right up front and that's gonna be kind of like the sexy thing to talk about, this is about motor. It's about who can work and sustain that pace of, that pace of work for the longest amount of time. Um, so don't get fooled. This is not just a muscle up workout. It's a motor workout. Who can keep going, who can keep doing those skills, not only when they're fresh, but when they're tired. Yep. And I think this is a workout that you are going to be able to redo. I mean, especially if muscle ups is something you struggle with, you know, maybe you only get through one and a half rounds the first time. That's not a whole lot of volume. Um, even if you get through, I think some of the best athletes are going to be through four rounds plus. I mean, you're looking at 200 wall balls, which is a lot, but that's not, that's not the most volume we've ever seen. It's only 28 muscle ups. It's only 400 double unders. Like there's people that are going to be able to take a day of rest and be able to go at this again. You don't, you're not going to tear your hands. You know, this is going to be one of those workouts you're going to see people score and then score again. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you guys warm up properly. Make sure you guys mobilize if you need to. Muscle ups is a high skill movement, but it also can be really taxing on the shoulders. This whole workout is going to be taxing on the shoulders. So make sure you warm up properly and uh, good luck. Yeah, good luck.